Ten months ago, a new alliance of 20 multi-issue think tanks and advocacy organizations from around the country formed the Progressive Ideas Network. The participants set out to develop a progressive intellectual framework for the next administration, Congress, and state legislatures. The result of this unprecedented collaboration is a new collection of nine essays called New Progressive Voices, Values, and Policy for the 21st Century. The contributors lay out a bold, cohesive plan for a new direction for our country on the economy, fairness, democratic rights, and justice. The Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy's Jim Harkness and Alexandra Spieldock contributed the essay, Rejoining the Global Community. We sat down with Jim to talk about the essay. Jim, has the U.S. lost its standing and spirit of global cooperation with the world? We certainly have. And the irony is that 60 years ago, at the end of World War II, we were really the nation that was taking the lead in bringing the world together around global problems. We were champions of passage of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and really participated actively in developing and strengthening the United Nations and other four of four global cooperation. The administration we have now, by contrast, has rejected the United Nations, appointed an ambassador who was openly hostile to the institution, not paid our bills there. I mean, it's really embarrassing. In the areas of other global problems like climate change, we refuse to sign the Kyoto Protocol. And certainly in terms of security, rather than working with the United Nations and seeking the kinds of solutions that we might have throughout much of the 20th century, we've instead had the Bush Doctrine, which is one of unilateral and preemptive war against whoever the administration decides is working against our interests. In negotiating trade agreements as well, our government over the last eight years has really acted on behalf of private capital and big corporations and really ignored basic human, environmental, and labor rights, not to mention the interests of the people in our trading partner countries. So what do you think the next administration needs to do to turn this around and re-engage with the world? Well, first and foremost, I think we need to re-engage the United Nations. We need to pay our bills. We need to appoint an ambassador who's somebody of sufficient standing to show our commitment to multilateral solutions and global cooperation. We need to much more actively support the Millennium Development Goals, which are very important, globally agreed on goals for fighting poverty and AIDS and other problems in the developing world. Obviously, signing Kyoto and becoming more active negotiators in the next round of discussions about how we can aggressively address climate change, rethinking our trade agreements, NAFTA and even the World Trade Organization itself, the way that it's organized, really finding a way to move away from trade as something that's really done for its own sake and for the sake of profits for big corporations, and thinking more about how trade can address the needs of people, communities, and the environment. Finally, I think we could play a really important role in helping address the global food crisis, something that I think has been really ignored by people on both sides in the campaign so far. There are big steps we could take to reform the nature of U.S. food aid. We can support United Nations efforts to help countries start producing their own food. We could help lead in the development of global food reserves and help better regulate commodity markets to reduce the kind of speculation and speculation-created volatility that's really played havoc with agricultural prices. Finally, I think that just as it took a global climate convention to address the climate crisis, the U.S. should play a role in proposing a global food convention to address the food crisis. This is something that's much too big to try to deal with through the WTO or through the World Bank, and it's certainly something we can't do unilaterally. So I think these three or four different areas are ones where the United States could really not only make big strides towards solving some of our country's major problems, but also send a signal to the rest of the world that we want to rejoin the global community rather than continuing with the failed go-it-alone policies of the Bush administration. You can read all nine essays of New Progressive Voices, Values, and Policy for the 21st Century at www.newprogressivevoices.org. Thank you.